Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on KMC Connect. We're so happy to have you all here and uh, we're going to get started here in just about a minute. We're going to let people kind of filter in. Uh, but while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a, a something to think about before we start the webinar. Uh, first off, my name is Andrew Reynolds. I'm the video production specialist here at KMC Controls. Uh, and I have our resident building genius, Kevin Mooney, here today. He's a product specialist, and he uh, specializes in training and uh, knows uh, our software really um, from inside to out. During the webinar today, I really want everyone to feel free to ask questions. Uh, our previous webinar on uh, KMC Converge went really well, and we had some great questions, and we got some awesome feedback. So during this webinar, please feel free to submit your questions, uh, and we'll try to get to those as we go throughout the webinar. Um, and today we're really going to be focusing on application deployment and the audit tool within KMC Connect. I know originally we had slated uh, a ton of different things to look at, but uh, we really wanted to dive in. We Again, we had some great feedback and we want to dive in on these topics. We can really see them inside and out and give you a good uh, overview on that. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. We're going to try to do some application deployment today, uh, run you through the ropes. Um, the Deployment tool is set up um, like three parts. So uh, you select what application you want. You configure that device and then you deploy it to a live controller. This would be a typical uh, job, um, typically done by someone in the office, the first two parts, um, probably somebody who has engineer the job, has a schedule, knows what all the controllers are that are going to go on the job, um, maybe uh, some rooftop units, maybe some air handlers, VAV controllers, fankle units, whatever they are. Um, ends up looking kind of like a spreadsheet. And then when the person in that can be done, you know, months or weeks before the controllers are even installed and then the uh, when he's finished with it he can export it to a cloud drive or a thumb drive and give it to a technician and the technician can then deploy it on the job um, if you if we're, mistakes were made in the office or there's an extra VAV controller or something he can go back and fix it in the spreadsheet then deploy it and save the job off and give it back to you and then you got you have like a as built to keep in on file so let's look i'm just going to follow through that process uh, show you step by step how from the person in the office to the technician in the field um, <clears throat> so if you have this is my live network right here so i have controllers and the person in the office wouldn't necessarily see these, but he would have a, a job schedule or some prints or something on it so he knows what controllers he's going to need. I just happen to know ahead of time what controllers I have a real live network. So um, I'm going to hit the application tools, uh, hit selection. Um, this is going to load the library up. Um, so <clears throat> now that I have my library up and running, I, the first thing I have to do is either create a job, like a new job, or I can select a job that I've already created. I did create a job already for this webinar just to save us a little time. So I, I picked the webinar. Um, then I can, um, I know what controllers I have, either, like I said, from a job schedule or from uh, looking at a live controller but i can go through and filter all of our applications there's like 500 applications in here so we want to narrow it down to what we need for our specific job so to do that i can start right at the top of the list make sure i'm in the standard library this library is put together by kmc and uh, i hit the drop down arrow and the first one I'm going to do is uh, uh, single duct VAVs. So I have 9311s over here. I have four 9311s on this network 
and four on this network. I have a 9001 on each network also. What's special about the 9311, so if you have a trained Veritrack that retrofit and you um, want to replace that, then you could use this 9311. It has a flow sensor on it and an external actuator. This VAV controller, the actuator and the controller are integrated into one, one device. And then this would be an air handle is 5901C. It is a unit, it's a general purpose controller that you would need to program yourself. You could use one of these for a, a rooftop unit with a bypass damper or something also, if you wanna do VDT. But for this exercise, we're gonna do an air handler for these VAVs and this 9001 VAV single duct. So I'm gonna go through and pick these 9311 VAVs. Um, I can just come right down here to speed this process up. I know I have a um, 9311, because that, that model number's right there, 9311, that filters out what's going on over here. And I'm just gonna say it's English instead of metric or mixed. So we, we have mixed for our Canadian friends. They like a metric uh, Celsius display, but they like to use CFM. So um, reheat type, maybe modulating. So you can see the filters are down pretty fast here. So I'm just gonna select this one because I know it's uh, no fan modulating reheat position feedback. And it's in the 9311 with English. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see if I can move that over. So this gives us a little bit more description over here. Along with this application comes a bill of material. So if you don't know which thermostat to pick, um, you can open this up and shows you the different thermostats that you could pick for this controller with CO2 or just temperature only, uh, the other sensors and actuators that would be supported, um, the data sheet, sequence of operation. All this ends up in your jobs folder for the technician to see. So <clears throat> let's look what else we got. Um, wiring diagrams, that's handy. Make it a little bigger for you. So we have full-blown wiring diagrams. So as soon as we add this to our job, which we're gonna do right here by clicking the add button, puts it down there. It selects these documents in different formats, whatever we, maybe we wanted in a dot doc to. Um, it puts them in our resource manager in our jobs folder. This is everything on our computer inside our resource manager. Under the webinar, it puts that VAV uh, application in this jobs folder so that in the future we'll have a whole list of jobs in here and a record of everything that was done for that job and you can export it so the technician can have a copy of it so now we need to um, look at our other view the 9001 VAV so I'm going to reset the filter down here <clears throat> still a single duct. Um, I'm going to skip down here to the device model. It's a 9001. Uh, the reheat was modulating. And I think that's it right there. VAV, no fan, modulating reheat, position 9001. So it's a different model. It has the integrated actuator. Um, it also has the documentation uh, some points of interest that you may find on a graphic or something. Um, all the same type documentation specific for this controller. So we're going to add that to our job also. This, this down here is our job. So then we have, on our job, we have two, um, we have two air handlers. They're going to use the 5901 with that. So from the factory, the 5901 uh, doesn't have any 
factory applications in it. It all has to be done custom. So ahead of time, I've created a custom air handler and created a, a library for my controller. So this is my library. Oh, there it is. I don't know. So that's it right there, the air handler unit, um, constant fan, modulating cooling, modulating reheat with economizer, and it has a heat wheel in it too. So uh, I'm gonna add that to my job down here. It's for, <clears throat> over here you can see that it, it supports a 5901 and a back 5901CE, which is for the uh, ethernet controller models. So after you have your job schedule, you know what devices you're gonna do, you have your applications in the job. You can look over here, you can see these applications are in our webinar job. So we're gonna go next. And this is how you configure, <clears throat> excuse me, you configure your controllers. So the first ones we're gonna configure are, um, move that over a little bit so I can see, the 9311s. <clears throat> so we need to put flow rates and everything uh, for a VAV controller. So um, I'm gonna create a device template down here. And so I have a template with all the flow rates and this is, we call this configuration screen. So you can configure the cooling set points, the flows, the, um, you can rename it, instance it. Um, so the first one, somebody in the office is gonna come up with an instance scheme. I have done that already, so. I'm gonna start with 10102, and it's gonna be the AV one. And um, so when I duplicate this, after I configure this the way I want it, oh, after I configure this the way I want it, it maybe it's not 400 CFM or 200 CFM, um, get it, maybe the customer knows what they want for the occupant heating set point or the occupied cooling set point, they have special requests. <clears throat> um, after you get it how how you want it, then you want to duplicate it. And we know we have three more of these, so I'm going to say three times. It automatically increments the uh, device instance and the name, and it duplicates them. So that that gives us these four. So we need four more for down here. So uh, I'm gonna create one more template. It puts it right down in the bottom here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna change the device instance uh, to match that one's 202 at the end. Okay, and this is VAV six. Five will be the 9001. Okay, so I'm going to start at six and do three more of those. Okay, so you have to do all the same model at one time here. Uh, why did I get one device up there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Okay, so now let's do the 9001. Um, don't want three, give me one. So we just have two of these. And it is the 10107. This would be the AV5. And I can then go through and set all the flows here again. So you may have, you know, 50 of these or more. You could do each 
um, each one individually, create your templates or go through and set the flows, the K factors, everything's in like a spreadsheet form here. <clears throat> okay, so and then we have the air handlers. So we do the we did the both VAV type model numbers, and now we're going to do the air handlers, which are then the 5901s. So going to create a template here. So these this row looks different now. It's not a VAV controller. It's made for an air handler. This is a custom application. So I I was able when I created the custom application, I was able to tell the tool what it is I wanted to configure on this page. So that will be another webinar. I'm sure we'll be able to do custom application. So uh, I'm going to. Put the right device instance in here. <clears throat> That's this guy right here. Then I'm going to duplicate that one and make it 203 or 202. Oops. This is okay. So now I've I've done both air handlers, all eight of the ninety three elevens, and both of the nine thousand ones. So the, my configuration for my job is done. Of course, in a real job, you probably have a lot more devices in this. Um, but let's go to the next uh, screen. This so when if you're in the office, you're done. You can't really do any more than this <clears throat> because you don't. You're not a sitting on the job with a bunch of controllers that need programmed. Um, so you would probably go to the, um, the uh, resource manager and right click on this and export this, and it'll create a zip file. You place that zip file on a either a cloud drive or a thumb drive, and then the um, technician can right click on his jobs folder and import that job. And it'll look just like this. So he'll, un he'll be able to see everything that you had done in the office um, to and make any changes in the field that need to be changed. Um, but he's going to want to go to the deployment page, and that's the third, the third step. Um, this one is looking just at the air handlers. We enable this one. This one looks at the two 9001s, and then this one is the rest of the VAV controllers. And I see here I made a mistake because I can see that my device instances don't match. The A1 is 101.02, so I have a duplicate device there. So it should be 101.03 there, and oh, I didn't do that right, but I can kind of fix it here on the live network. And this is probably a good showing because this really does happen. Um, so this guy is going to go up there. And this guy is going to go there. See how it changed that? And it's just matching the real controllers out on the network to um, what we got going on here. And uh, let's do this one, the 9001, that one matches, seven, six, five, hmm, four there. So they all match. Once they all match up, they're, it looks at that live network to get this checkbox, and we can't move forward till we have this checkbox checkboxed. Then in um, there's two more things down here. We could reinstance the whole job if we didn't like these and we just wanted to type new instances in here. Maybe um, we used our phone app to instance 
all of these, uh, and we just started with one. We didn't know what the instance was going to be um, when the controllers got deployed in the field. So we could we could either match them like that, or we could reinstance them. We could match them by the name if the name happened to be right, or we can rename them. We can do either new new instances and new names here. Um, Oftentimes I do new names because I, oftentimes the guy in the office doesn't really know what the name is by the time the building's built and the real name is, goes into uh, the, the devices. So from here, we could click, okay, write the new names down to all the controllers and say, write to devices. Now this is gonna take too long for our webinar. Um, it's 10 till now, uh, we only have about 10 minutes left in our uh, webinar, so it would take that long to deploy these these controllers. So we're not going to show you that part, but it just gets a progress bar on the page. And all these turn green, green is good. So when all these turn green, then it means everything's deployed properly. If you have some that fail, maybe for a wiring problem or something like that, you fix the problem and redeploy, and it'll turn uh, turns green, you're good, good to go. So I'm willing to entertain some a couple questions on application deployment, and then we'll do the audit. Awesome, awesome. so, so yeah, we, we have a question here. here. Um, yeah. Are the templates that are uh, that you've created, are they being stored on your PC or just in the session? The templates are being stored here on the PC in the resource manager uh, under our job. Perfect. So they're um, right inside these folders. Yep. Yeah. So that's the only question we've had so far. So I encourage people to continue typing out your questions if you have them on what we just went over, uh, and we'll get to them toward the end. And we'll just go ahead and move right on into the audit tool. Okay. So typically, uh, when I do the training class or am on the job site, I tell right after deployment, um, we want to audit these controllers. It's kind of like a backup, but it, it's not like a complete backup. So it's a backup of the configuration on the controller. So what that means is on page two, um, here, when we make all these changes to the CFM and, uh, you know, that all these changes here are kept in the audit when we audit, it's put in the database for that site so that in six months, if somebody calls in and says, hey, this thing isn't working, you can go back to the job site, run the audit against the controller again, and it will tell you anything that's changed that was in the configuration. So I'll show you, we'll do that here. Um, I'm gonna close my application wizard and open my application menu bar and go to audit. So this is really, it's very fast. So as soon as you're done deploying, I kind of encourage people to do it when they're done deploying before the um, balancers get in there <laughs> um, because they can get in and change things inadvertently. They don't know, or I don't, I don't know how they get changed sometimes, but whole during the process that things could go wrong and then right at the end at commissioning when you're done commissioning you do another audit make sure everything's right against that audit now you have a when i walked out the door and said everything works now you have a record of how everything was configured and you know in six months you you could even charge them for a maintenance contract and say, oh, well, we'll come back and audit your building in six months and make sure it's working like it was the day we commissioned it. Or if you can charge a service call if they're asking you of saying it's not working right. So it's pretty simple and fast to do. Um, we're gonna bump into a little problem probably because I didn't actually run the deployment. So that guy right there, it's a 5901, the audit tool doesn't know what that is. If I had actually pushed down the cu custom app, then it would know what it was and it would 
have had an audit because part of creating the custom app, we create the audit data. So um, we could do this per network or we could do the whole building. It's, it's fairly fast to do the audit. Um, so I'm just going to show you on this side. If you do any button pushes on this side, it affects everything. I'm going to get rid of that guy. These are the VAV controllers. If you have something on this side, this is in our database. If you push some of these buttons, then it only affects probably the one unit you're looking at. So I'm going to evaluate um, all right here. That means everything over here I'm going to evaluate. It's going to go out and read those configuration points. And like in the other tool, green is good. It's getting a good read on all the points. Now, this also evaluates the coefficients um, like after the balancing guys. So there's more in there than just the configuration. We, we handpicked a bunch of properties to put in this audit tool. You could actually, if you lost a VAV controller, you could pull it out put the new one in its place, get the right device instance in there, run the audit against it, everything would fail because it's brand new out of the box. And then you could restore the whole configuration from the day it was um, commissioned back to that time. So here's everything it found, including its MAC address, device instance, all the flow rates. Um, it, it remembers, or it's, it's evaluating the relinquished default value which um, is usually the, the value we use to configure, configure it so that it's persistent through a power cycle. But it's also evaluating the present value so that you know if that uh, property is in override or not. So if it's in override, probably at eight, um, and somebody has overridden it from the original settings, it would flag it and say, oh, so this isn't right. So, so, and then, so anyway, let's let's look here. This is what it found on the controller. Then we're going to put it in the database by saying store. If we just store this one here, then it just stores that one. So we want to store all device results. We're going to put all of these in the database. <clears throat> when it's in the database, it shows you over here. This is stored application in the database. This is the one we just evaluated. So I'm going to jump over here real quick and uh, let's say on this 9001. Um, I'm going to pretend like uh, I changed something in here. Um, I'm going to use one of our little application tools it's called VAV config. And uh, it wants to know what application, that's it. So I'm going to say somebody at some time thought they needed more cooling. So they moved the CFM rate up to a thousand instead of uh, what it was um, from the factory or from our deployment. Um, it automatically reinitializes that controller when I do that. So let's wait for that guy to come back. You, if somebody changed a set point, um, like a occupied cooling set point. Hmm. Sorry, I'm waiting for that controller to come back online. There it is. So if somebody changed an occupied cooling set point too, uh, you could change it in the relinquish default or if they made a override from like a Niagara front end at eight or something like that. Um, to 78, you might see uh, that happen too. If I push save, it's going to automatically do it at eight. So it overrode that also. Um, so then I'm going to reevaluate this one. Uh, evaluate selected, that's this one here. Um, <clears throat> guess what? It failed. It found that somebody has changed the occupied cooling set point. Um, somebody had changed the maximum cooling flow. So you can decide here, you can print a report that of the failures and take them to the building owner and say, 
hey, what do you think about this? Do you want this to go back to the way we commissioned it? Or is this kind of change okay? If this change is okay, you can store the selected, you can store either select one or store all. You can put all this into the database and say, okay, don't flag that the next time. Or you can say, no, I don't want those to be like that. I want to restore it to the day of commissioning. So you can either restore the selected or restore all differences. So I'm going to say restore all differences. I want it like it was the day I commissioned the job. There it goes. It reevaluates it after it's done and says, okay, everything passed now. Everything is just like it was the day I commissioned it. Now this doesn't, like if somebody went in and changed the code, uh, reprogrammed it, it won't, it won't catch that. Um, so the sequence of operation, we really can't evaluate, but we can evaluate any set points or any configuration points that have been changed. Uh, the reheat type, the fan type, in, any configuration point. So that's a really cool, powerful tool that I think is not getting used to its potential. A lot of times when I'm on jobs, I was like, do you have an audit this with the day you finished it? No, we don't have an audit. So that should really be part of your routine. After deployment, you do an audit. That'll give you a record of all the configuration and then evaluate the network, the, everything on the network and really quick to give you some uh, ways to troubleshoot your, your network, your settings. Okay, I will entertain questions. I know we're running out of time, three minutes over. So I'll entertain any questions. It's kind of quick to go through that. All right. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Uh, that was great. Uh, I do have a couple questions here for you. Um, so the first thing I got here is, uh, so the audit will not detect program modifications, but just looks at the values that the template designates as configurable. Is that true? Correct. Um, <clears throat> it's a little bit more than the template because we also evaluate the coefficients like after balancing. So the balancer puts in the min max flows, things like that we think are important. We also put those objects in the evaluation its name, you can see the device instance and its name and MAC address. The MAC address is not in the deployment tool. Um, so there are there are few more things in here than on page two of the deployment tool. Um, and we're looking at the present value and the relinquished default value to help you decide whether it's an override or not. Awesome, uh, we had another question. Can you use the audit tool even if you didn't use the application deployment? Um, you saw that I did not deploy. You saw what happened here. I didn't deploy to this one. If this was a one-off air handler that you made and you didn't use the custom application tool, it wouldn't be able to audit it. You really need to use the custom application. This is it. Uh, do a custom wizard right here. Um, I'm sure we'll have another webinar for custom wizards. This custom wizard to create a custom application that we can use the audit tool with. But if you don't deploy um, using a custom on this 5901, then no, you can't use the audit tool. The factory applications in here, um, I don't know if you noticed when I first put those in here, it asked me, hey, what application is this close to? because it has a pretty good idea from the factory what it was, but it stopped and asked me, which application do I use here? So I don't know if you noticed, uh, I don't know if it would do it again. Oh, not that one, of course. No, nope, it already, I already picked it, so it already knows what application I'm gonna use on that. So it, it can be used with right from the factory, using our standard apps if you don't use the application deployment, but you're gonna get asked a question probably saying, is this the right one? Because it doesn't know for sure. So with our standard apps, yes. Awesome, so yeah, that's the extent of our, our questions. Thank you so much, Kevin, for that. I'm gonna go ahead and take back over and kind of wrap things up here. Uh, so before we go, guys, we just wanted to mention a few quick things uh, kind of unrelated to the topic. Um, we just released a new seven inch touchscreen display. Um, and this uh, offers 
on-site system access without the need for using a workstation laptop tablet uh, you can you can access our devices straight with this display so it's something really great to go check out you can read all about it on our blog and we have a whole new video series on our youtube channel uh, also, we have recently just come out with our uh, KMC Commander 2.0 YouTube videos. So uh, if you're interested in our IoT platform, uh, learning more about that and digging into how that works, uh, we have a whole array of videos on installation to set up and use and how to use that technology. So that's all been updated for the new 2.0, which is really quite exciting. There's a ton of new features. Uh, and we also wanted to let you know about a training class. So especially for those of you out on the West Coast, uh, this September 25th through the 28th in Anaheim, uh, we're doing a four-day class on KMC Connect, KMC Converge, and KMC Converge GFX. And we'd love to see you out there. Um, if you want more information on that, uh, send me an email, send uh, a reply back, uh, or just uh, hit us up uh, on any of our uh, social media channels and we can get you more information on that. Uh, and we just want to thank you all for being here. Um, you guys are going to get an email later today, uh, basically uh, with a copy of this webinar. So it, that'll be on our YouTube channel. We always put our webinars up there uh, to see at a later date. So I know somebody had asked about that. Um, and then we also want uh, you to just check out our YouTube channel for uh, helpful different uh, things on software and new products. And um, that's where you're going to find that. And uh, we just thank everyone again for being here, and we hope to see you at our next webinar. So thank you all.